Canada's construction industry builds new records every year. Every year, more houses are completed, more money spent, more men employed. Carpenters and bricklayers, plasterers and plumbers, all enjoy more work and wages as building figures mount. But the records are broken in the long, bright days of summer. Winter figures tell a different tale. Of all the building tradesmen busy each July, about one quarter are unemployed by February. To prove that houses can be built year-round, a new Ottawa project is started in the fall. Through two feet of snow and ice, foundations are dug for Moortown. The Ottawa and District Trades and Labor Council planned the project and named it after a former TLC president. A key point in the Moortown plan is speedy installation of the furnace the moment each basement is enclosed. Right away, the men light up and work continues comfortably inside as winter storms rage out of doors. Building in winter need not be slower or more expensive than in summer, and Moortown is ready on schedule for the finishing touches. Moortown's 44 units are conventional in design. Their most unusual feature is the rent, $58 a month for a three-bedroom home. A long-term loan from Central Mortgage and Housing makes the low rent practical. Before the last workmen move out, the first tenants prepare to move in. Town board, composed of local TLC officials, show Mayor Charlotte Whitten the first completed house. The city of Ottawa bought shares in the company, supplying 10% of the capital. Mayor Whitten takes a feminine interest in the modern appliances fitted in every unit. To live in Moortown, Families must earn less than $3,500 a year and have at least two children under 14. The list of prospective tenants was filled before the first foundation was laid. As winter returns, Moortown is complete and the district TLC begins another project twice as large. An old problem finds a new solution. Union-built, year-round, low rental housing. <laughs> Mariel Marasco will always remember the summer of 1955. He was a coal miner in Nordegg, Alberta, watching 40 years of mining come to an end, listening to a strange silence. Ten years ago, 450 men worked at the Brazo collieries. Now the market for coal has dwindled, and the mine lies abandoned. Edmonton, the Alberta government moves to help the people of Nordegg and other towns where mines are closing. J.S. Ferguson is appointed chairman of a miners' rehabilitation committee responsible to the Department of Industries and Labor. A survey of the mining areas reveals that the mines are unlikely to reopen. Railways now use diesel locomotives, and coal cannot compete with the new, cheaper fuels, natural gas and oil. In Calgary, Ferguson seeks the cooperation of the United Mine Workers. Understanding the plight of his brother miners, John Stockelock, international vice president, gives full union support to the committee. In close touch with job opportunities everywhere in Canada, the National Employment Service promises to give special attention to the emergency. In coal mining towns like Nordegg, only one solution is possible. 
the Rehabilitation Committee decides to move the unemployed mine workers at government expense to new jobs anywhere from the Great Lakes to the Pacific Coast. Mario Marasco and his family, the move is not an easy one. Both Mario and his wife are children of coal miners. Nordig has always been their home. By late summer, only a handful of pensioners remain. Once a bustling community of 1,200, Nordeg becomes a lonely ghost town. Most of Alberta's uprooted mining families moved to the cities. In Edmonton, the Marascos find there are advantages in their new life. Better housing, schools, and shopping. But most important of all, a chance for Mario to make a living and support his growing family. Fortunately, Alberta's coal crisis comes at a time when the rest of her economy is booming. With the assistance of the National Employment Service, all mine workers were assured of jobs before being moved. Some older miners, used to the cool dampness of underground pits, find outside work difficult. But younger men are encouraged to enter new trades. Marasco must start as an apprentice, but he's got a job and a good chance to become skilled. Uranium mines, road construction, and the oil industry provide work for other men. As an era of coal production ends, Alberta finds a place for her jobless miners.